Good evening, Satshikal, Salam, Adab, Namaste. Welcome to the Coalition of South Asian Film Festivals, COSAF. This is day eight, and we just had the most beautiful um, short films uh, presented uh, in a, a collection called Celebrating the Spectrum. I am so honored to be part of this coalition. My name is Ashut Khan. I am the festival director of the Coalition of South Asian Film Festival. I'm the festival director of the Mosaic International South Asian Film Festival, which consists of the Tasveer South Asian Film Festival, the Chicago South Asian Film Festival, the DC South Asian Film Festival, the Nepal, Inter Nepal American International Film Festival, the South Asian Film Festival of Montreal, Vancouver International South Asian Film Festival, and of course, MISAF. I am sitting here in Mississauga, which has gone back to phase two under lockdown. COSAF came together in response to the COVID-19 epidemic. And every day we think of all those peoples, hundreds of thousands of people around the world who've lost their lives to this terrible epidemic. And we're hoping that you will stay at home and nothing is stopping you from watching all these amazing movies. We started on the 3rd of October and we end the festival on the 17th of October. All the films and industry panels are free. So please write about it on social media. This is an incredible, incredible event. I'm going to first of all start off with um, a land acknowledgement. So we'd like to begin by acknowledging the land on which we gather and on which the region of Peel operates. It is part of the treaty lands and territory of the Mississauga of the Credit. For thousands of years, indigenous peoples inhabited and cared for this land. In particular, we acknowledge the territory of the Anishinaabe, Huron Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Ojibwe Chippewa peoples, the land that is home to the Metis, and most recently, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, who are direct descendants of the Mississaugas of the Credit. I think it's really important that we acknowledge the land um, from where we derive all this richness and all this wonderful ability to see South Asia as a beautiful, diverse, amazing place which we celebrate, which we come from. I am delighted today that I am able to have such amazing, outstanding filmmakers. So I'm going to start introducing them. Um, Tathagata Ghosh, he is the director of Miss Man, joins us from Calcutta. Hello, Tathagata. Thank you. Thank you, Arshad. Hope everyone is well. Thank you so much for having me. We have Arun Fulara, the director of Sunday. Arun, where are you joining us from? Hi, hi, Arshad. I'm joining uh, from Bombay, from Mumbai. Okay, welcome. Adil Hussain, he's the actor in Saving Chintu. Uh, he's joining us from... I can't hear you, Adil. You have to unmute yourself. Meanwhile, we also have the director yeah. of Saving Chintu, Tushar Tayagi. Hello, Tushar. Hi. Hi. How are you, Urshad? I'm joining in from Noida. From, from Noida. Okay. And yes. we have Dipanita Sharma, the actor, actress from uh, Saving Chintu. Hi. 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 We asked everybody to mute themselves, so they've been really good. And now they're having trouble Am unmuting. Am I but as well? No. No, I'm you're good. You're good. Okay. <laughs> You're joining us from Gurgaon, is it? From Gurgaon, yes. Oh, wow. I feel so international. <laughs> this panel is like... Um, and then we have um, Edward, who is the actor in Saving Chintu. Hi, Edward. How do you say your last name? You're on mute. Yeah, just on mute. And unfortunately, we couldn't get Saim Sadiq of Darling to join us. But welcome everybody to this amazing panel that is dedicated to LGBTQI um, lives. And uh, we know that the South Asian diaspora, I mean, you know, as, as South Asians, we understand the struggles of these uh, LGBTQI folks and how important it is to share their stories. Um, I am personally indebted to you all for sending your films. Um, my, myself, together with our programming committee, watched films we cried, we laughed, we celebrated, we enjoyed, and we are so happy to share them with you. I'll come to you, Tathagata. Please tell me, how did you make this marvelous film, Miss Man, which is not just beautiful, but so moving and so, um, it's such a mature film. Like we, as I, as I told you the first time I saw it, I said, where's the rest of it? It should be a feature. Tell us about it. 
thank you so much, Ashad, uh, and thank you, Kosa, for curating this uh, wonderful festival in response to COVID pandemic. Uh, it's an honor to be a part of this incredible event. Um, well, uh, Miss Man is a film which is extremely personal to me, and thank you, Ashad, for the kind words. I'm glad that you liked it, and, and thanks, to, uh, thanks to the audience. Hope they responded to the film as well. Um, the film is actually very personal, as it is based on the partly on true events which happened with a friend of mine uh, who was actually not accepted by his family when he came out to them um, and uh, then of course he was forcefully married off and i was not informed of the wedding also being a close friend and many of us were not informed either so i was heartbroken i couldn't understand what was happening but few months later uh, i came to know about uh, the whole thing and uh, the marriage broke off, Section 377 was very much there. Uh, I felt helpless and uh, from there actually the seed uh, was you know, born within me uh, to tell the story. And a few years later, finally, I decided that uh, probably now is the time to share the story with the world. So I went ahead, wrote the script, um, made the film with my own money, uh, saved to work for a year, saved money, and then invested the, the entire money into making this film because I just had to tell the story. And uh, then, of course, I got a wonderful team um, from, from Kolkata, from Bengal, um, who helped me. I think the main challenge was casting the protagonist. Um, uh, but actually, I saw a picture of Orgo, who played the lead character. Uh, from Kolkata Pride Walk uh, in 2018 um, and uh, right after I saw it I decided that he's the man and I met him um, and he told me that this is my story from five years back how did you came how did you come to know of my story uh, it feels like you have you know uh, about me a lot and I said that I just wanted to tell a story and the so it, it also became personal to him as well in the process. So he came on board and I think uh, the film evolved with the inputs from the cast uh, and the crew as well. So I think it's a labor of love completely. And uh, He's such a good actor and he's thank so you beautiful. So and he has never acted before. Uh, he is actually a school teacher. Um, he teaches biology in a, in a, in a primary school in, in Bengal, in Kolkata. Um, and uh, I think uh, the film turned out to be what it is at the moment, what the audience is because of his inputs a lot. I sat down with him. He told me stories of his own life. And I think while shooting the film at times, I felt like I was shooting a documentary uh, because it, it, it felt like he was reliving some of the incidents which happened with uh, him in the past as well. So I think it was wonderful. And uh, one thing he told me while shooting the film was that uh, there are a few scenes in the film where we see actually our protagonist being rejected by the lover, uh, by his lover for not being a woman uh, and by his homophobic father um, who will not accept him at any cost. So, and he told me that uh, it reminded me, it reminded him of his relationship as well um, at, in, in parts. So it was at times it was just, you know, like um, it was just too much for him to handle as well. So the whole experience for me was very cathartic. And I explored the concept of gender fluidity through Miss Man. And I feel when after finishing the film, when I came out of the experience, I was, uh, you know, like I, I feel as a changed person. I know it's like all the filmmakers go through a personal change while making their films. But I think this was truly cathartic for me in many, many ways. So this is a filmmaking experience I will never forget. So when the, ex when the response has been good when at various screenings and at a festival like COSAF, where people hopefully are liking the film, I think it just cannot get any better. So thank you so much. Keep. Sorry about that. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm really sorry. The internet kind of went out here. So, Dagata, your film is not just um, extremely layered and extremely moving, but it's extremely relatable to LGBTQI folks. I found it very, very relatable, especially when you not only show how you know gender you show the dynamic between genders and his own exploration of his sexuality but also the violence that a lot of lgbtq folks have to have to face yet there is such strength in in your um in your uh, protagonist so it's very very nice to to see that kind of strength 
And um, I have a question, which I'm just going to bring in because it's so relevant. Roshni says, um, wonderful film. Can you please talk a little bit about the imagery and the alternation between the child and the adult perspective? I found that very mature as well. Uh, well, uh, yeah, thank you so much uh, for, for mentioning that. Actually, um, so the, the funny thing about this film is that if you read the script of Miss Man, uh, the script is very linearly written. The script was very linearly written. And uh, it was not what we see in the final film. But um, actually, uh, like if I say, for example, the, the casting of Ratrish, who played the trans woman mentor character in the film, uh, her part was actually written. This has never happened with me, but her part was written just a week before we shot uh, her, her, her scenes. Um, and I just sat down and, and, and had a conversation with her about how she feels about uh, the, you know, the whole... Um, about about, about, the, about about how people are currently being treated in spite of Section 377 being, uh, you know, done away with in our country. Uh, so, and various stories uh, came out, very various stories were told to me by them. And uh, the, the fact of the montage treatment that uh, finally we did in the film, it was not supposed to happen. Uh, those scenes were filmed uh, actually on the location. So suppose I see Orgo, who played the protagonist, he is there immersed in some thought and he's standing by the window. Uh, so there is a shot which comes in the film where we see the protagonist and also Jim Lee, who played the sex worker in the film. They are together at times by the window and uh, blue light is pouring in uh, from, the, from the outside. Um, so that was a shot that, that, that lighting was done to specifically light a room adjacent to that, to where the light was kept. To, to light the brothel room, the brothel sequence that is there in the film. And uh, so while actually we were done, while we wrapped up uh, the entire sequence, uh, suddenly I see Orgo standing there and thinking about something. And it just looked beautiful. And I said to my DP, to him, let's just roll the camera and just take this shot. Uh, I don't know why, but I felt like just documenting that moment. And, that is very uh, smart direction. And and uh, and I just felt like I'll keep it. At least if I don't use it, I'll just keep it for my. You know, like I, I just there's something more magical about that in that moment. The very very sacred about that moment, and uh, that's how we filmed it. And in the editable, many of those images were formed. I, I ended up having many of those images, uh, which I felt like probably I'll keep it as some home movie or something just behind the scene of making the film. But those found the way in the film very organically. I just felt uh, that uh, you know, like there was some there was some calling within me which said that this this image should be kept right after this sequence. So all of those were were very organic, and it only happens when you have a great cast actually. Um, so Orgo, Bimal, Pyle, everyone, Monozda, who was there, they all came together uh, to to make this film. I feel that this is a very unique collaboration that I had working with the cast and crew and it has never happened. I mean, I usually do storyboards and I keep it very strictly to what I chalked out and all, but this was, this film was very exceptional. And I think, thank God I did that. Um, I mean, probably, I don't know how to, if I, if someone asked me that, how you went about doing it and if you can do it again, I don't know if I can do it again because it was, it was so organic and in the moment and in the go that uh, it just, everything just fell in place. And I think also I had a great editor, Amir, uh, Amir Mondol, who helped with uh, cutting the uh, sequences and great sound designers as well. So I think it was, it was great. And it evening. all comes through. Thank you. A great film is made by a great team. And you know, Rita said something very interesting asking about the actor. She said, how did you find him? And you answered that, but she also says he drives a dra dagger into my heart with his portrayal of this character. And you know, speaking of daggers driven through hearts, I mean, in Saving Chin to the ending, it's just amazing and really unexpected. So let's move on to Saving Jintu for a moment. Um, welcome to Shar. Uh, Thank you for having you, you did a great job um, with that film. Can you tell us a little bit about your film and how did you get to cast the incredible Adil Hussain? I mean, wow. So actually the script had its own journey. So I was, it, it started in LA, it was 2016. And I was, so I, for a very long time I was, uh, struggling with uh, severe anxiety. So this Indian doctor, like I was seeing, he took care of me uh, like as a family person. And one day we were like sitting, um, uh, we were having dinner, he, his wife and myself. And his wife started this conversation. Uh, it was just a murmuring and I just jumped in. 
so somehow uh, he told me about how his parents actually uh, illegally adopted him from india and i was very moved by the whole story so i was like i would like to make a film on that and we went back and forth and we signed like 29 or 30 pages nda but then the film uh, this the whole the, you know the uh, the story was shelved because in his uh, you know life story parents were straight and he was suffering from malnutrition and couple of other things and when i moved to india in 2018 for a couple of years i actually went to rishikesh in an ashram for a retreat and there uh, you know i uh, in my group uh, there was uh, there was a guy named jeremy who actually uh, was living in india since 2001 who is living in india since 2001 and in one of our conversation like group conversation he when we were introducing ourselves he told uh, that he's from manhattan and he runs a shelter and that kind of you know uh, got my attention and i uh, spoke with him what kind of shelter he runs so he told me that you know in 2001 when he was diagnosed with hiv back in uh, new york he took this kind of you know soul evolving journey and he came to india and somehow he ended up in nagpur where he saw that let alone lgbtq people people with hiv and kids with hiv we they are they are facing such a discrimination so he ended up setting up uh, you know a shelter here he started living here full time and quickly my uh, next question obviously was uh, that coming from lgbtq community and you know where in india there's so so uh, so many stigmas attached with the hiv i wanted to ask him like how his journey has been and couple of stories that he told me moved me to my core from my core so he told me that you know um he so he opened his shelter in uh, the main city nagpur and he was like when i opened for like couple of years uh, the goons was try were trying to chase him away by saying he's breeding and feeding the viruses and he was like uh, in his uh, uh, language he was like i'm new york oh i'm from manhattan i never got scared away until they beat one uh, one of the kids from his shelter almost to death and he was like within a week i moved uh, 50 kilometers away from the main city and he was like for a very long time i was trying uh, to get uh, you know them educated through social help and myself and it was like two years back like two years back from 2018 to somewhere around 2016 he went to a local school and he spoke with the principal he got all the kids admitted and the principal was having some issue trying to like kind of fill in his last name so he gave his visiting card and that had a logo of hiv so the principal asked are these the kids that you're trying uh, to get admitted are these those kids with hiv and he said yes and then and there all the admissions were cancelled and one of the heartbreaking thing he told me was that indian government uh, is not i mean he's not getting any help from indian government and through research uh, i came to know that for you know people with hiv living with hiv they have to get tested every 3 months to be uh, in the you know uh, they they have to be undetectable and for that they need to get tested every 3 months he's not getting any help for for treatment or testing and he's raising funds back in america so that these kids can get tested regularly they can get updated medication because the medication he's getting from indian government is like four or five years outdated so this moved me and i thought that how about if i kind of merge to these two things because so many times we have seen you know straight couple adopting a kid and there is i mean it has issues of its own but the in this case the stakes were so high and you know i i was able to tell the story that i always wanted to tell so i kind of merged uh, you know two real stories and saving chintu came out wow so this is the reason we have q and a's and why we have film festival q and a's because there's no way that we could have get, gathered this deep insight into your extremely like long kind of struggle for for you know putting the story together and how you've condensed uh, you know your experience with this tale um, in order to tell a short 
film story. Well done. Really, this is an important story to be told. Thank you. Thank you. Adil Saab, how did you join this project? We actually can't hear you. I think you're on mute. Uh, Tushar, can you tell me how did I come uh, on board? Yes. I forgot. So, <laughs> no, what happened was like, we were... Uh, so, actually, I when I started writing the characters, so Adilda was the first one and I had a couple of other actors in mind, but first uh, was uh, Adilda. So, what happened? We were thinking that, okay, I'll reach out to Adilda in, in some time, but one of his other so there was a film festival that i was on the uh, you know panel of jury and the first film i opened is adil das uh, another very amazing film called neel and i saw his acting and i was like now i'm sure uh, that i uh, i want to reach out to him and i just texted him on instagram i was never thinking he'll uh, reply back and then i get this reply from uh, him yeah send me the uh, script i'll 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 get back to you so he was filming in atlanta i sent him the script and i he at this, that time his schedule was so busy for so two weeks i didn't hear back so i was like okay he's not interested so i was like i'll just send a, a follow up email and i sent it he was like i've been busy i'll read this script tomorrow for sure and i'll get back to you and in two days he sent an email i saw the email i didn't open it for like almost 3 to 4 hours because i was like i was like if it is a no that i don't know what to do so i didn't open email for 3 hours and then my mother was like why don't you open email it could be a good uh, you know uh, email and i opened it and i remember i was yelling from like top of my lungs and he agreed to do the film so yes that is so wonderful <laughs> Adil Hussain is a magical human being. Just this year, he's in so many movies in Hotel Nirvana. And then we showed Pariksha a few days ago. It was a very, very, very moving film. My personal little story is that I met him in 2012 at the Chicago South Asian Film Festival and uh, was so honored. Once again, I highlight the importance of South Asian film festivals. And he's a crossover star, of course. He's very well known all, all over the world because of Star Trek. Uh, but to be so generous to a emerging filmmaker i mean that takes a really special kind of person and thank you adil for being so supportive how did you like working on this film Please. well it's always uh, challenging uh, because i know that <clears throat> certain things that one has gotten used to certain you know uh, facilities and comfort and then you suddenly come and you just come back from the world's most expensive series and then you come and get into noida is in the heat so <laughs> you know it's always challenging but within a couple of hours one sees you know tushar is running around and the stand directors are running around and there is somebody wants water and then the you know the director himself is trying to get the water for so then you you sort of feel so encouraged and inspired uh, because i had seen what you know what that was like and uh, had been and and um, and and the best part is that the intensity of the passion that the story had been written and as 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 tushar had said the that he really wanted to tell the story and i felt that when i read the script and it's so wonderful and i am honored it's not that you are honoring me uh, to be a part of a film where the storyteller the director the writer is actually wanting to tell the story not thinking of making money because in order to make money i do my robo 2 and you know force 2 and uh, what do you call that? Uh, good news and uh, bell bottom that I've just shot in Glasgow. That's to make money. Um, and and of course, I'm not saying that they don't tell their story passionately, but at the same time, the intent behind this, not the director writer, but mostly the producers, uh, is to profit from the film, which is great. I mean, there's nothing wrong about it. But here, it is completely the artistic um, endeavor takes precedence over everything else. And, and that's how I had been, that's the only reason that I act, because uh, I, I, 
you know it's magical to act and 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 i have to pay the bills so that you know sometimes in a film when i'm in a film to you know earn money and i realize i i of course i take all the consequences of being in that kind of a film all kinds of consequences and uh, so you do it and then suddenly you are in this absolutely raw and rudimentary uh, you know situation and you feel alive so it is a gift from them uh, to me it is so great thank you tushar and uh, thank, thank you, you arshad for asking me that question you're so generous dipanita and edward i also want to hear from you how was your experience working together you have such a good chemistry all of you together and you speak so naturally tell us how it was thank you um okay so coming on board this project i i continue to say this and i think uh, whenever i have a conversation with tushar i always thank him for this uh, very special opportunity there's a reason behind this because it also it, as an actor it breaks my image in so many ways uh, nobody had cast me in a part like this uh, i love everything about it i uh, i think the content of course is something that attracted me instantly he got in touch with me on a uh, messenger i think to share sent me a message on facebook messenger and uh, from there i think uh, the fact that the character is so uh, she is the only character in the, in the in the whole film where she actually doesn't get anything she is completely selfless it comes from uh, a place of kindness uh you know and that really really uh inspired me and over time after even after choosing the film i feel there's been a journey uh with tushar with the team you know as we go forward and we understand more and more the importance of a film like this and how important it is at this time well he introduces your eyes to us first right and we are just yeah. struck by them And Thanks. you can see love in those eyes, and they are, those eyes say so much that the Thanks. dialogue doesn't even have to say. So I yeah. think that's a great way that he has directed you and introduced you to us. Well done. Thanks. Thanks. And Edward, you had very good chemistry. <laughs> Tell us how it was going to India and shooting this film. Can hear you. Can you? Is, are you unmuted? Yeah, I'm unmuted, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Just speak up a little bit. That's it. You can hear me? Yes. yes. Now we can yes, hear you. I guess I need loud up. I care. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, Arshad. Um, yeah. So I, I, it was probably a WhatsApp message or maybe it was Facebook. I don't know how uh, Tushar found me. I can't remember now. But I didn't need uh, really any convincing to, uh, you know, to come on board to this. Um, so I make my money um, playing uh, usually like the white um, colonial oppressor in uh, in Indian productions, <laughs> um, which you know is uh, is great. I don't. I, I certainly can't complain. You know, it's a great way to make a living. Um, but I don't get a lot of opportunities to uh, to be a nice guy. And so as soon as you know, I heard about this role and this 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 project. Uh, that was all I needed to know. So I'm not I'm not going to oppress anybody. I'm 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 a nice guy. Okay, I'm American even. Wow, I don't even have to pretend anything <laughs> much, you know. Um, so it was uh, it was a great opportunity for me to just act like a normal person. Um, and not be evil um and then when i realized this is an amazing story this has so much relevance to india to the world um to what's going on right now i just felt really blessed and i just want to thank tushar once again i probably haven't thanked him enough um for uh for for getting me on board to this uh this amazing opportunity um priya, so yeah so thank priya you. has a question for you priya says is this the first time you've worked on a south asian film uh no not at all as i said uh you know that's my my bread and butter is working in uh in the indian film industry usually uh okay, hindi, sorry. yeah you, you, usually hindi productions um and uh but right now i'm working on a telugu film i'm working in a tamil film and there again playing the bad british guy in the tamil film actually right, I'm, a, right. i'm a french guy um so i 
I it's not the first time I played a nice guy in in Saving Chintu, but it's rare. And uh, so I've been, you know, I've been in uh, a lot of Indian productions for the last uh, about 12 years. I moved to Bombay about 13 years ago, actually, to seek my fortune in wow. Bollywood. <laughs> what brought you there, love? Yeah, India. A love of India brought me here, actually. And uh, it's just, uh, I got obsessed with Bollywood, actually, before I ever set foot in India. And um, I just, especially old Bollywood films, it just became this um, obsession. I taught myself Hindi. Um, I watched like 200 Bollywood movies, and then I came to India. And um, it's it's the culture also. It's the spiritual energy here. It's the people. It's the food. It's the climate. Everything um, about India just uh, just works for me. I don't know some uh, some past life uh, thing going on, or uh, or I don't know what. But this is where I belong. So I moved here like 12 years ago. And um, I did, uh, it, love brought me here, um, love of India, but then I did, uh, I did meet my wife here in Bombay and uh, married, have an eight-year-old son, and uh, life is good. Oh, that's lovely. That's a lovely story. I wish I could have that kind of a story. Since I was born in Pakistan, I could never get a visa. But that's another uh -huh. <laughs> story for another time. <laughs> um, you still right, belong you know, here. <laughs> yeah, I love India. I was a flight attendant. I used to go there three times a month. Another story I love love india um so excited for the next filmmaker arun Falur, um, fulara who's the director of sunday welcome welcome arun your film speaking of stabbing in the heart your film stabbed me in the heart really it was it's just so powerful and it's so moving thank you for making that film can you tell us a little bit about that Hi, hi, Ash. Thanks, thanks so much uh, for, for the kind words, and I would like to thank uh, the festivals for you know curating the film. Uh, uh, you know, I uh, much like the character actually. Just to tell you how the film started, much like the character uh, of Kamle, the lead uh, protagonist in the film, I was on a you know in a saloon on a barber's chair one day and uh, uh, one Sunday as usual, and uh, you know for some reason that day uh, when the barber boy touched. Uh, my cheeks, you know, while shaving, I felt it, you know, and, and I'd been going to the barber shop for like, you know, all my life and that's never happened. So that kind of, uh, uh, and, and, and I'm straight, right? So I have never felt that and I, that got me thinking and, uh, you know, being a writer in Bombay, uh, you know, I have dealt with loneliness, uh, you know, for a, for a long while. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, so, so, I, uh, this is probably because, you know, it's been a long while since anybody's touched me, you know, so intimate, intimately and that kind of while sitting on the chair got me thinking and I was, you know, as, as a writer, you're always kind of looking like now I'm so used to looking everything as a story situation, you know, whenever I listen to someone like even on the panel here when, you know, everybody's narrating all these stories, I'm constantly thinking of, you know, yeah, you know, this is such a good story, even uh, when talking with my friends or with my siblings, you know, I'm always so conscious of myself, you know, just observing and, you know, uh, looking out for stories. So I was sitting on this barber's chair and, uh, you know, I immediately stepped out of myself and I was like, you know, hey, uh, in, if, if, if in place, uh, if in my place it was uh, someone else, you know, uh, who was not straight uh, and who was probably, you know, attracted to this barber boy, uh, I mean, that's, you know, that's such a powerful story because it's a story about, you know, uh, the film is therefore a story about loneliness. Absolutely. You know, come out to, uh, you know, someone he loves. Uh, it's about being so close uh, to the person he loves, but, you know, yet being so far. So it's a story of, of you know, almost being in the arms of his lover, but not being able to you know tell tell his lover that you know he has a crush uh, so i just wanted to kind of you know transport uh, uh, you know the viewer into that chair and what it feels for this man to be sitting in that chair uh, fe go feeling what he is feeling going through the emotions that he's going through and i mean there's not really too much of a story in the film right i mean the whole effort was not to do too much of a backstory or explanation you know just you know uh, let the audience go with this uh, character with the protagonist and uh, 
uh, hopefully, uh, you know, give them a glimpse of, you know, what he feels and maybe uh, leave them with a little smile in the end. Uh, so, so that uh, is how the film kind of, you know. Well, sexuality is so complex. Okay. And B, we are sitting in COVID times and touch is so important for human beings. And a lot of people are single. A lot of people are deprived of that very essential human contact. And this film resonates with a lot of our viewers. Chandra asks, I expected you show Kambi's family and I was pleasantly surprised you didn't. And then of course, Asaba, can you tell us a little more about the decision for the, for the story which you just told us? Um, so, you know, kudos to you. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful film. Um, now, where else is it going? Where is it going next? So, uh, I mean, it started, the, the journey of the film started in February and, you know, we started uh, in Greece and uh, we were in Tampier in, uh, in March and then, of course, the pandemic hit and for a few months there was nothing happening. So, uh, now, I think uh, in the last uh, 10 days, I've had like uh, eight screenings, you know, all over the world. So, uh, currently, as we speak, I think uh, Chicago Reeling just uh, finished. Uh, we are in out out from Connecticut. Uh, we are Amazing. screening in Taiwan, in a, a festival called Taiwan International Queer Film Festival. Uh, we are in Armenia, in uh, you know, of all places, in Yerevan uh, Short Film Festival. And, uh, oh, fantastic. And, uh, in uh, Grenoble and uh, hopefully uh, next month in Belgium. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's... it's, it's, it's uh, you know, one of the tragedies best. is that we can't, we can't all meet you you know and that's really sad because films like yours um all of your films basically you know you deserved a festival run you deserve to be able to go to those festivals i remember Tathagata was so excited when the world premiere was going to be i believe at bfi flair is it right Tathagata? yeah and, and yes. he was so excited he even got his own ticket and you know <coughs> really as a festival are a special place where you can meet each other and meet incredible and outstanding people like rub, rub elbows with the uh, with Adil Hussain, you never know, you know, and uh, so it's a real shame that you're rubbing screens um, instead of rubbing shoulders with these wonderful, amazing people. Um, Roshni has a question for you all. She says, uh, is there any change in the way LGBTQI films are being received in India now that Section 377 um, has been repealed? And how have your films been received? I think, uh, okay, I'll go. Yeah. yeah. I think, um, I think, yes, um, uh, definitely there has been a change, but I think where, where I think we need to still uh, have a long way to go is uh, representation. Uh, because I feel that um, like what I did, at least for, I can speak for myself, not taking away from the, from the performances of, many incredible actors um, who have been a part of many great LGBTQIA plus films. But I think that um, uh, while casting, especially if I say for Miss Man, I was very sure from the beginning that uh, when I'm making a film on queer lives, I will cast um, actual people from the community. Because I feel that when I'm making a film on the queer community, I am I'm contributing to the movement that they have been the, the struggle for their representation for being a part of their mainstream because that is where actually say for example when I talked to Ratri she played the trans woman uh, she actually uh, I, I'm glad that many in many festivals um, while discussing the film when her character came up many didn't even recognize her as a trans woman they said that oh she, okay i mean i we didn't get it and she was very happy to get that feedback because she doesn't like to be called a trans woman also she identifies herself as a woman and i think she always tells me that i want to be a part of a film where i am not playing a trans woman also people need to That's accept amazing. Me, people need to accept me as a woman and i i think the representation still needs to be concrete and i feel that there are so many talents in the community also i have met many people uh, many great individuals, many great souls who are great artists and they are actually looking for that opportunity uh, to be a part, to be, become in the, you know, to, in, in the, to be a part of the mainstream work as well and not being, you know, like those cliched uh, 
portrayals that they usually we see in films or in any kind of visual medium so i think and and, and it only starts when you cast them in 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 actually and in important roles uh, in a film like uh, you know like many of the filmmakers who have made films uh, here sunday or saving chintu or myself or darling uh, many many great films uh, i think that uh, the representation needs to be right and for that we have to cast uh members from the queer community in queer roles and i think that is something which i am constantly working on and i think in the next project uh, when i'm making a film uh when i'm making a film on queer lives i will actually also try to have uh queer people in the crew as well not only in front of the camera but behind the camera because i think they bring a lot of perspectives uh, sometimes as a filmmaker i might have uh, you know i might don't i i i just might lack perspective in certain situation there is something in the script which i am not probably you know like which is stereotypical which is not right in 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 representation and i think uh, the queer people has been misrepresented for so long uh, in cinema uh, that uh, i think uh, it needs to break and it don't can start from us so i think uh, not only as a uh, members of the cast but i think members of the crew i'll be very careful to uh, now that i met a lot of people through the festival run of our film miss man I think I'll definitely work with so many people actually and many of them have volunteered to come forward to to work in in future projects so I think that is something I'll probably keep in mind as well and um, I think um, you know like I feel that what is niche today will become mainstream tomorrow so it's amazing this is so important thank you so much for saying that and thank you so much for doing that that's so 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 wonderful to hear and uh, Rajam Rajam says to Tushar thank you for ending on a feel good note with Sailing Chintu and also i just want to quickly tell you uh, priya said uh, why did you choose the name miss man sorry i'm a bit all over the place but uh well tushar you want to answer it first or yeah i mean my thing is like uh, i think films create an ecosystem for a society community and worldwide where you know the people or the the children especially the, and you know you start making societies and communities at the very basic level i mean just like trees it's at the seed level and i think in india we need to create a ecosystem through films where the kids who are you who are you know kind of being brought up in in uh, this uh, era they can feel and they can feel connected to people on screen they can have their role models and you know i think films they they act like uh, a catalyst which can take conversation you know way ahead from the point where they have just started so i think in india we need lot of films for you know we have we have talked in lot of films about you know the rights and everything at the point it's not just about lgbtq rights it's about human rights Mm-hmm. and we need to create films which are normalizing it i i remember back in the days when i was growing up uh and my father he's like very well educated person he's he studied from iit but i still remember when i was growing up if there is uh, any uh, scene lgbtq scene or something there was he never changed the uh, channel but there was kind of hesitation and same i've seen uh, was in i mean i personally was very hesitant to take a word uh, like speak gay or lgbtq but now when i'm promoting my film on uh, social media i don't have to think twice about it because everybody has so to say have opened their transmitters in brain to you know kind of after especially after 377 that this is a community which has been recognized but now we have to kind of further move along uh, the narrative of it Yeah and that's the thing your visibility is so important and speaking yes. out is so important and articulating yes. all these ideas is very important so i'm very happy when filmmakers like you all um actually speak about these issues and say that we are going to have um lgbtq people in front of the camera and behind the camera if these especially if the roles require um that character to to play um you know queer character and so on and so forth now um what adil i just want to taking it from there what do you think of this 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 idea and this concept sorry i put you on the spot there a little bit the 
concept do you, do you of think bringing... directors are doing yeah. do you think directors are doing enough um, in India or in the West to ensure that uh, you know queer representation like Thagata spoke about uh, the trans uh, woman who wants to you know play a woman and also who even getting a, a role as a trans person is Absolutely. I think um, is it changing? As, is it having an effect? Are we are we seeing the the, the, the sea change in, in like bigger players? No, or no. I mean, it's the beginning. I would say. I think it's the beginning of a change, which is a which is a wonderful thing because the evolutionary process is very slow. I mean, any kind of evolution, uh, the idea, acceptance. Uh, for example, even women. LGBTQ community is uh, the most minority community amongst. Imagine the way that society had been treated, treating women. It's uh, the entire 50% of the population of the world. <laughs> you know, mm. there's the greatest apartheid on the planet Earth. <laughs> like to come out from there and then the community would look at, oh, these are also the people who used to think they're untouchable. Oh, right, right, right. So it, it takes uh, revolutionary films, uh, movements, ideas, literature, you know, all kinds of artistic forms has to talk about it in the education system. And it should be taught in the primary level. You know, my son, I talked to him, he's 10 years old. I mean, I started talking to him about it when he was six years old. So that it is there since the, you know, it should be taught. In, in, yeah. in the kindergarten. I mean, it should be just normal thing that these are, the, there are so many different sexes we have. As simple as that. And then they're fine. So I wish that more films are being made and, and, and more mainstream film without the cliches and the stereotyping which you have seen in certain Bollywood films, which is sort of, instead of helping the community, it has sort of, you know, uh, made it into a laughing stock unfortunately yeah. and that's the, one of the reasons that i feel quite quite a lot of time i feel guilty to be a part of mainstream bollywood film as well because the nuances the subtle aspects of human interactions and human relationships are sort of uh you know uh, black and it's just painted black and white and quite often it does that and then i realized that okay i have to i'm again justifying my presence in the mainstream film I just, uh, to, to subsidize my artistic activity, I have to earn from somewhere without robbing a okay. bank. That's the reason I do that. <laughs> so, um, and, and I'm very clear about it. Uh, so I think more, more and more, and I'm so, so inspired to hear the stories of the Thagat. And sorry, I didn't get your name, who made uh, the Barber story. Arun. 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 Hi, Arun. Lovely story, and I wish I get to see these films soon. Um, and I'm so happy, of course, Tushar, I worked with him personally, so it is very touching and moving, you know, that we talk of. I used to call uh, some, I, 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 I acted as uh, a woman trapped in a man's body in a play in, 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 in England. I remember. I remember 2001, and who remembers Tushar? I, I you, you showed me a picture of it when I made it. Right. Yeah. When was that? Uh, when did I meet you, Tushar? In in Pondicherry. In Pondicherry, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So someone commented uh, uh, something on that I forgot exactly, but I said, "This body is just a biological costume." Yeah. You know, and and the spirit is gender neutral. Yeah. So very well said. The, conditioning, conditionings, uh, biological conditionings are towards, has tendencies towards a certain gender. Certain people are, had tendencies of different kinds and, you know, and uh, so just look at it that way, as simple as that. With just biological costume and uh, spirit is, as Tushar said, it's about human rights. It's just, we are humans, first of all. That's what I keep saying to people, that when I was born, uh, my mother, my father did not scream looking at me when, you know, as soon as I was born, oh my God, I, we gave birth to a squirrel. Those squirrels are beautiful, but we were born as a human being. And that's the first identity. And that should yeah. be it. And how I, to I, touch... have a, I have another question for you. What about if okay. you, have you been offered any uh, gay roles and would you play them? Someone said, uh, 
Adil, does acting in LGBTQI subject films have any negative impact on your mainstream film career? And sure. I just added on top of that. Even if there is negative impact, I don't give a damn about it at all. I, I'll be very happy teaching theatre and doing theatre if nobody cast me in films. <laughs> you know, I'm very happy doing that. And, um, and we have just. Oh, I acted. I acted as a as a trans woman in a French film called Crash Test Oakley. Uh, which came out in movie.com uh, for 30 days and uh, it did I, 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 the script was excellent but uh, for some reason I didn't did not enjoy the film um, anyway so I hope I have answered your question yes very well thank you we just have a few more minutes so I'm not going to take up too much of your time yeah. uh, but I wanted to ask you how are you surviving and coping with the challenges of COVID I'll ask, uh, start with you, Edward. How are things changing in Mumbai where you are and in the film scene? Arun? Yeah. Edward. Edward. Can you hear me? Yeah, just move this closer. Bring it to you closer. Uh, so I have been taking a big break since uh, since COVID started here. It's been, uh, you know, it's been a good opportunity to just hang out at home with the family for since March about. I do voiceover work as well, so I've been able to do that from home um, with my home recording set up. But, um, you know, even that has uh, has dried up a lot. Um, things are starting to come back now. There's a uh, Tamil film that I uh, that I started on. Um, they find they wanted to start back in March and uh, we're starting now. Um, I've had about six days. And uh, to be honest, it's a little it's a little scary, you know, shooting because, you know, the precautions that uh, everybody takes, it's it's not so consistent from person to person and situation to situation. And I find myself reminding people to uh, to to wear the mask over the nose. Um, you know, <laughs> if it's wear it at all, you know, and that kind of thing. So it's it it is a little scary. It is a little strange. Um, and uh, it's also really nice to be working again. Um, so uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that um, as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, when you go out in 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 Bombay, I try not to um, leave the house uh, unless it's absolutely necessary. But you know, it's uh, it's feeling like it's just any other day, any other situation. The lockdown um, doesn't really, you know, seem to be uh, showing when you're just out and about. You know, everything's open, everybody's out there. And uh, I'm not sure if that's great or not, but it is what it is. They're very strict in Canada. You know, Telefilm Canada has guidelines for film shoots. And I was shooting a film two days ago and uh, this, this gentleman just kept taking his, when we were shooting, you had to take your mask off. And then he's decided to start singing. And I was like, dude, you're so close to me. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> so they totally made me nervous. Dipanita, what about you? Um, so pretty much, I think, what Edward said. But yes, I've managed to shoot a short film from home um, well uh, with a, a very dear friend, a female director, who even Adilda shot with, I think, after I shot with her. Her name is Indrani Ray, that's right. She remotely directed me from Mumbai. Wow. Uh, we used our home uh, and it was a single actor film. So, yeah, it was uh, simpler. I After that, I have also uh, just completed shoot on a, on a digital original uh, thriller film, which is going to be shown on Z5. And we went to Rajasthan and we uh, we were all tested and we were, uh, uh, you know, tight units. And uh, I think I was constantly paranoid, though, because as an actor, you have to constantly take off your mask and then you do your hair and makeup and then you wear your mask and you go on set. And then um, actors, I don't know, as some people disagree, but I do feel that actors are a little more vulnerable because everyone yeah. else can keep their you know safety kits on but we can't but yes you have to and i think that's where actors trust comes in so you trust each other and you know you you go for it you uh, so yeah and and very happy to be back at work as well it's just like good everything. for you yeah yeah very nice thank you Kishar? i actually have been like uh in a i think in 10 years time i haven't had 
this kind of a kind of vacuum where you know uh, it i would say it's a creative vacuum where i'm just at home i'm like i i had to shoot like a short film and i'm working on a feature film but uh, right now i'm taking i'm not doing any like i got couple of ad uh, offer to director but my i'm very uh, like being cautious to the wind mm -hmm. and i have to you know come back home and i don't want to kind of transmit anything so i'm just staying home and i'm working on so many scripts so i'm i just am thinking uh, i'm living with a mindset that at least next 3 to 4 years i don't have to come back to like writing table so that i have enough stock to go back to back to back so i think this is the time where you and i'm doing a lot of meditation i'm trying to get to know i, I kind of believe that the the universe we live in our body lives in we have a way bigger universe within ourselves so i'm just trying to get to know my soul and i'm doing a lot of meditation which has been helping me survive this pandemic Amazing, Arun. Uh, yeah, pretty much uh, what Kushal said. I think uh, for me, I mean, I uh, like as a writer, uh, you know, even in Bombay, uh, you know, you're sitting inside your house on your laptop, uh, uh, you know, uh, mostly not going out. So the pandemic, uh, fortunately for me, uh, you know, has not really affected me, you know, uh, as much. Uh, so I'm to my sister's place, and it's actually been uh, quite a bit of fun uh, playing with my niece and nephew. You know, uh, I don't think we'll ever get to spend this kind of time ever together. Because, you know, they'll go That's so true. Soon. That is so true. So, so yeah, it's been a blessing, and uh, I mean, I've been writing like much like Tushar said. You know, you just want to kind of now uh, after the first couple of months of just you know figuring out what to do, and you know. uh you just want to now use this time to uh you know finish whatever you've been kind of delaying for whatever reasons and have a you know a bank of scripts ready uh now actually one has gotten so used to uh, you know being inside that i'm actually a little uh, uh, worried about you know the time you know it starts and everybody kind of it starts expecting you to you know uh, be here or be there or uh, Yeah, it'll be hard for us to meet people after this in person yeah. without a screen yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you to tagato uh well i think i have been at home in calcutta for since of course in lockdown and i have been living here for for 3 years now um and uh, so i have been at home and uh, I think uh, there is something which actually bothers me so I think before shooting anything of course I've been reading a lot and I am actually rereading some of uh, like couple of scripts I have written 2 3 years back and just trying to see how bad they are and how I can improve them or maybe if I can improve them at all <laughs> or uh, but I think um, for film shoots actually uh, only a couple of days back one of our legendary actor Shomitra Chatterjee who was in Satyajit Ray's many films he mm -hmm. was actually diagnosed with covid and he was oh, in a critical no. condition um and uh, now he's of course safe but uh, but i am very worried because you know in film shoots it's so such a physical experience also physical mm -hmm. uh, exercise that uh, it sometimes gets difficult to remember whether you are wearing your mask all right or where you are touching or which surface you are touching and what what not so i think and i'm i'm i just keep saying this to a friend of mine that uh when i'm shooting like i love to shoot out on streets with a camera and just do guerrilla shoots but when i'm out on streets now the people the you know sometimes the whole city is a set and the background the people in the crowd are sometimes their background extras if i may call it that way and i just i just hate to see them wearing mask and walking yeah. in the film yeah. you know it's it sometimes it just creates something within me that i can't express so i think uh, i hope that but i know that this will continue but i hope that uh, things become normal and i am courageous enough to go out and shoot something but uh, mostly i am reading uh, a lot watching many classic films which i have not watched for a while uh, that's a good idea exploring uh, like a director's work uh, specific director's work mostly like many indian director's work actually um and just trying to Please find out how to recommend really... some things i follow uh, you so <laughs> thank you thank you i think i i recently saw this film called akrosh uh, which i think everyone should see because it's very relevant at the moment what is going on in the in the country so i think that's one film it stars om puri nasiruddin shah uh, amrish puri wow. great film actually yeah 
and um, and just even old old classic European films also. Um, so I think yeah, that's pretty much what I have been doing and reading a lot. And as I said, uh, just trying to see that, just trying to get inspired also because sometimes you know, like you don't feel like writing also. You know, like you you just feel yeah, like yeah, yeah. sitting and thinking. uh what to write but i think it's really important that you guys you know realize that we are all in this together absolutely Please, uh, join hands work uh, you know send stuff to each other you welcome to send it to me or we are a festival family now all seven festivals you are all part of our festival and ab- absolutely family. i think so india feel, don't feel left out absolutely and i think uh, the, the now that so many important festivals are happening virtually festival like kosaf is happening so many great films in the ca- in the in the uh, in to watch and i think um, i just can sit and watch films from kosaf only you know like uh, with so many so Thank many then i think uh, so it, it's great i think that the festivals are happening virtually because initially I was worried that how can festival happen online uh, that is well, we some- live and learn right yes so but, but- i'm telling you even though they're happening virtually <laughs> it's not the same i really yes, hope yeah. this is over soon because i want to really meet you all and you know thank you in person we'll move to adil um adil saab now um before we um you know um, end the session um because uh, any any words of wisdom thank you so much for joining us you're you're on mute And then just because I have some grey beard and I haven't coloured my beard, and you're asking some some words of wisdom from me, <laughs> is that what it is, Arsha? No, it's not. It's not that. It's because you are the most established person <laughs> that I know. <laughs> no, I uh, well, I had been. Uh, I have become a baker. Uh, a uh, better cook a uh, better father i guess i hopefully better husband as well um because well, you're also definitely speak, a very good friend i try um so it has been extremely reflective and introspective time and as all of you know you know how how much that i had been also talking about it to my uh, students when i teach acting that the inner mechanism that we all have within uh, which feels things which is sensitive you know and and especially actors and since we i'm in the midst of a lot of directors here as well uh, if if uh, tushar says or tathagat or arun says action and if i can cry or laugh or you know be angry or and make love you know and i happily or at least so why can't i say action to myself and and smile and laugh and you know whenever i need uh, and that's the job of an actor and 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 if when i say actor means the one who does an action it's not like a job of an actor and you know nothing like that at all uh, just a person who does an action is the actor of the action and that's about it as a definition of actor according to me so it is important uh, i think that this wisdom that actors have uh, should be again imparted in the primary school <clears throat> that there is this emotional intelligence that we have there is this inner mechanism that we have which is available to us if we know how to recognize it and how to use it for our benefit and not become reactive in the society you know in in in, in living everyday life and and to become responsive instead of reactive so um, watching a lot of movies uh, i have a i have a i'm lucky to have been curated uh, by my teacher um, movies from 19 1936 till you know recent movies which he has watched three four times and if he wants to watch one more time then only he puts it in the hard drive that that is his criteria that the movie has to i must feel like watching it again and again uh, so around 300 movies so i had been watching a lot of ozu's movies from japan and you know all over the world and yeah so what's the wisdom uh, is that um, this shall also pass and oh, thank uh, you 
beautifully and but even if it doesn't but we have the inner mechanism to to withstand and with a smile not only withstand yeah. wow thank you so much that's so kind of you Aditha. thank you to all of you for joining us at COSAF uh, please uh, to our viewers COSAF.org uh, watch our panels our industry panels our films and our Q&A's which are so valuable and uh, my name is Arshad Khan on behalf of the Coalition of South Asian Film Festivals. I want to thank you all. The festival continues until the 17th of October. Please share on your social media and invite your friends. Thank you. Stay safe. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Goodbye. Thank you.